Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 45. Tech from Hong Kong. Thank you for listening to the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 45. Uh, with us in the studio today, we have uh, Stuart Allen. How's it? Uh, old uh, Let's Talk Geeker. Usual Let's Talk Geeker. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I'm old. tired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Quinton. <laughs> <laughs> How's it? <laughs> um, and Jan Vermeulen. And coming all the way from Hong Kong, Barry Reed. And later on, we might have Johan Als from the IntelliSat launch. Is he actually at the launch? Yeah, uh, well, he's at the fancy do for the launch. Okay, but where? In uh, that South only Africa happens at half past eleven overseas. No, no, he's here. Oh, okay. Uh, it only happens at half past eleven. Yeah. So. But he's gonna be wandering around inside and he's got his portable uh, device. So he might be able to take some shots for us uh, with Skype in. Cool. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Ooh, this is all this is all about Skype this show. Yeah. I mean to be able to try and do the dual Skype with uh, we we were playing with this today. It's actually pretty cool. And you it doesn't work for me. Yeah, well, you, you, you've got to have Windows. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's uh, I think it. Yeah, you know what? Like, Linux Skype is stuck on version 2 or something. Yeah. 2.18. Yeah, 2. 2.0 beta. <laughs> Dude, it's, yeah, we don't go there because you get cross. <laughs> well, I heard that there's a, there's a big drive um, at the moment for an open source version that's yes. going to be created by somebody. Yes. It's called GNU Call. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. GNU Call, yeah. Yeah. So hopefully something relevant will come but out But it's there. very planning at the moment, eh? Yeah, this is early, yeah. early yeah. stages. It's it's like pre-concept. Yeah, but they, they're using thing. like SIP for this the signaling SIP, yeah. and it's all open protocols and stuff like that. And they're going to have mm. security built in as far as I know. You know, yeah. proper, uh, what's it? Uh, mm. SRTP security and things like that. So, okay. yeah. yeah. It's, it well, sounds good something. anyway. The thing is there are SIP servers out there. The, mm. the, the, the thing that GNU Call needs to do is it needs to do what Skype does, which is pretty client. Peer-to-peer. Uh, peer-to-peer, mm. and um, it needs to talk then, and then obviously provide commercial services to various countries. But there are SIP servers that already do that, and they, yeah. they provide them at the same price as Skype does, more or less. It's just... But the, the SIP clients out there are... Pretty rubbish. Are, are yeah, ugly. they're not very cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they work just fine. This is yeah, that Ikea... Ikea. Uh, but also, yeah. you need, must do video. It will be doing video, yes. And you want that when... Like when I phone you, I don't want to go through a SIP client somewhere in UK... I want to connect directly to you. Yeah, that's fine yeah, if, you've exactly. got, if you don't have firewalls in between, hey? That's the biggest problem. Sip, you can't get around nat, it. Uh, sip, not, nat uh, traversal. Uh, Skype has NAT punch through. Yes, yeah. so but if your firewall master. doesn't support that and you're both firewalled off, okay, you so can't... Stu, that, that's fine. You want with failback to a remote yes, server. that's yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 no, no, no. So what does but Skype do then? Does it, does it, it fails fail back. back it fails back to back open to, third party. Yeah. Okay. That you can connect, create connections Oh, with. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. like that whole thing with the peer-to-peer was actually quite a bit of a scandal. Yeah. Because stuff didn't work for a lot of people for some yeah, for reason. For quite a while, yeah. There was yeah. a lot of problems. And then also they had the core, so a whole bunch of the core nodes fell over with one of the updates. So oh, a whole bunch of your trying to root and find out where people were were gone. Mm. That was a Microsoft update. One of the Microsoft client updates. Yes, that, yeah. cra- that rebooted all the machines and everything. Yeah. And then Skype went <laughs> a little bit wonky. And yeah, I remember that. That's what yeah. you get for running your servers on Microsoft Windows. There you go. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. They weren't running their servers. It was people's machines. And then it collapsed their like, distributed peer-to-peer network. Oh, because everybody rebooted at the same Everyone time. Everyone rebooted at the same time. Yeah, and then, and the then no one could fell find over each other and, and it all failed. And then they all went. Then all the failovers went to back to Skype servers and they all fell over. Yeah, and because it was like a yeah. domino effect. Domino effect, yeah, oh. there we go. Do you remember when Skype went down? It was about two years ago, but it went down about for about four days. Do you remember that? Is mm. that what we're talking about? I think that's what we're talking yeah, about. No, this was this year. Or oh, yeah. last year. Last year. Yeah, yeah last it year. Took them because it took them some time to, to actually... You're right. It was down for days because they had to yeah. they had to fix the, the peer-to-peer thing and get the servers back online. Yeah. It, was it, took, it took them a couple of days yeah, to come it was, back. It was mental. <laughs> Somewhere, some tech was having a crap day. Episode 45, Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> anyway, Failovers. In, anyway, we're, we're, we're playing with the multi-Skype. Uh, we can get multiple video callers in. Uh-huh. Um, and it worked quite nicely. I must be honest. And only one of you needs. Look, you've got to pay for the premier version. How much was it? I didn't even look. You get a seven-day trial. A oh, okay, seven-day trial. Okay, yeah, so, so I'm on the seven-day trial. Five dollars a month, Barry. 
Yeah, it's either five dollars a month or five euro a month. I, thought I can't remember which version I was online earlier. Okay. But yeah, it's either way, even if it's euro, it's like fifty fifty rand a month. But you know, if it's if you're in a family that talks a lot to each other, like um, like my family, where we're all over the world, it's definitely worthwhile for one person who's frozen. in the family oh. to get uh, to get hold of it. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm. I think that's what mm. the first Androids are going to be like. <laughs> Go <on. laughs> Hopefully not. Right. Cool. All right. First topic. Um, let's take Barry away because he's look frozen. Uh, nine eyes. Yes. There's a whole bunch of, you always hear about all these cool images on Google and uh, Google Maps and all the rest of it and Google Earth and Street Google View. Street View. So some guys have gone through and they've collected a whole bunch. They've actually got an uh, exhibition running. Of the blown, of the photos expanded and stuff <coughs> like that, but you can go through to this uh, nine nine dash eyes dot com and just look through. And there's some very very cool and interesting photos out there. Yeah, um, there's some fun ones there. I, I flip now. I've gone blank. What was the? Dude, there's there was a Kalashnikov things. There. There's like, it looks like a gun deal going down. There's like a in the middle of the road. There's a car upside down, and there's burnt out cars and lots of people flipping the Google van off. <laughs> I think that's one of the yeah. coolest things to do. It's like There's some random baby as people well. People hiding around. away. So I've just got some of the, the yeah, so images that, that on random the... random baby outside the Gucci store. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's just sitting in the street. Um, I've got it's some of almost the... probably behind the pillar in front of the shop. Mm, mm. But they... Well, they some... don't allow babies in the store. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she just left it outside. <laughs> yeah, she, it to the post. Yeah, I think she forgot the leash and just <laughs> hoped it wouldn't wander off too far. <laughs> oh, we're yeah, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> But it's, it's worth going. Go, go check it out. Oh, it's only four people in the chat. You know how many people must have flipped off that van every time they see it and then gone to go check out and they actually can see themselves? <laughs> oh, mm. Definitely, definitely. The thing is, you've got to be quite quick, though, because, you know, those vans don't drive that slowly. I've never... Yeah, actually also, if you're driving behind it, maybe, that's a different story. Mm. You can get caught a couple times. Then you, can, they, they, then you could be flipping it off for about 300 meters. <laughs> <laughs> what if you think how much time does these guys actually go to go through all these streets to find all this stuff yeah, yeah. that's the thing but that's crowdsourcing eh I mean oh, of course. he's just he, they just um, I bet you what they did is he did a, a search on blogs and stuff like that for yeah, photos yeah. and just trolled also once you get well known people start sending you start photos start sending you put mm. out a call to people and say you know go to reddit and everything and say I'm doing this project yeah. you know, send me your cool uh, street view photos mm. Oh. Mm. Right. Okay. Now, um, uh, Jan, you were going to talk about these finally or going to be a Wikimedia chapter. Yeah, yeah. Um, the 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 word provisional was used. Uh, we, we've we've um, had uh, and you guys have had um, one yeah, of we, the guys from the Wikimedia chapter on. I think we um, wanted to get him on. We chatted with him very briefly at the Software Freedom Day. Yes, yes. Um, we did then ask. Unfortunately, life got busy and all the rest of it, so yeah, we yeah. couldn't get him on. Yeah. Um, so my list though. Yeah, but um, so so he's been on Let's Talk Geek before, so he's on one of the earlier episodes, I, however briefly that may be. Um, so the Wikimedia chapter has been in the works for quite some time now, and the guys are, are busy discussing how to incorporate, as it were, mm, the, basically mm. the, the, the group uh, discussing the thing on the uh, mailing list have decided to go with a Section 21 company. Uh, they have had to, uh, then they, they have to like take a whole bunch of stuff, submit that, to the Wikimedia Foundation through Chapcom, chap, the chapter committee, yeah, yeah, and they then decide, you know, whether whether mm. South Africa can, you know, whether Wikimedia South Africa would be officially recognised as a chapter, mm. and um, the chapter was actually expecting a bit of a to and fro. We were warned by one of the guys who works uh, with Chapcom. Uh, his name is Achal. I don't know if you ever chatted to <coughs> Achal at any. There was any a guy stage. I tweeted. He's the guy that came from on the Three Seven Dinner. Uh, yes, yes uh, that's right. That's yeah, Achal, Achal, Achal Prab yeah. Prabala, I think, was speaking yeah. at 27 dinner. And he, um, he warned us. He said, listen, there is a bit of a to and fro, but it doesn't take longer than X months. I think it was like two months or something. Yeah. You know, it's doable. And we got it first time. We, huh. we submitted our stuff and they said, welcome to the fold kind of thing. Very cool. So the, the provisional acceptance is really just about uh, we have to sign a chapters agreement. And the way I understand it, in order to sign that chapters agreement, we have to have a local, an official local organization, a company or a club or whatever the case yes, might be. Uh, it needs to be, be uh, an organization which isn't represented by a single human being. It has to be 
something yeah. something with a membership role. Yeah. Um, and and for that they want to use a Section Twenty One nonprofit organization. Company. Yes. So um, so yeah, we have a Wikimedia ZA chapter. They are busy, uh, or they have actually submitted a bid to host Wikimania Twenty Twelve. Wikimania is a international conference held for all of Wikimedia, yeah. um, including Wikipedia. So um, all the Wikimedians get together. It's apparently anywhere between 500 and 600 attendees at this stage. And the bid that we put together was for Stellenbosch. And uh, we're up against Istanbul. We're up against Montreal. And we're up against Washington, D.C. Um, so, so it's... Yeah. So a, a lot of some heavy competitors and 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 and, and um, I chatted to Larry Peterson. He's one of the founding members of the chapter, and um, he said that uh, he went to Berlin. It, it should have actually been a dead giveaway that our chapter was invited to a a Wikimedia chapter meeting in Berlin, mm -hmm. even though we weren't officially approved. Oh, yet. Okay, yeah. It's, it should have been a sort of like a you know we're pretty much gonna. We pretty Heads much up that. Except you guys, uh, but uh, we only put two and two together a bit late. So it's really one of those things because you're worrying so much, you you, you so make sure everything. Visa, <laughs> flight booking, <laughs> hotel, just cool. get me to Berlin. Um, but uh, regardless, um, he, he said that they chatted to a bunch of folks in Berlin, including the guys who are organising this year's Wikimania uh, in Israel, cool. and they're all very stoked to come to Stellenbosch. Good wine, yeah. Africa. good wine, Africa. Africa. Good, 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 it's pretty you land. Get one around, yeah. see your animals. Cape has animals. Anyway, they will no. travel through the rest. If you fly all the way out here, you're going to go do the Kruger Park. You're going to do all that thing. No, I mean, there's lots of game reserves down there. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just taking the piss. But uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, the most folks were just excited about the wine route. Cool. So, South African wine is quite famous, popular overseas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, and the wine route there is awesome. Yeah. Just and have to play none it. of the other countries, none of the other competing countries or competing cities have wine routes. You can go to Wikimania and get sloshed on the same day. <laughs> Anyway, you could take a you could take a tour through the DC ghettos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I'd be quite stoked to have a Wikimedia mania in South Africa. That'd be no, fun. That would be very very cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, what mm. does what does having a Wikimedia chapter actually mean for us now? Um, well, we get to put in Wikimania bids. <laughs> yeah, besides, um, and, and and that is a very good question because really, what what Wiki, what Wiki, uh, Wikimedia f chapter essentially is 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 another non profit organization. Mm -hmm with and usually their core tenets revolve around spreading knowledge which is something south africa can really use yeah. is getting some decent uh you know propagation of knowledge into places that you know don't have those opportunities necessarily also sort of vaguely remember from the 27 dinner they said i think some of our afrikaans is quite well represented on wikimedia but some of the other national Languages, ones like yeah. zulu and all the rest aren't so on so like some of the things that the Wikimedia chapter will do is trying to get these other languages into yeah. and start, you know, trying to incorporate them and get them into yeah, this. Represent J them just, in. just for clarity's sake, from my involvement with the Wikimedia chapter, and, and I went to the first founding meeting, but I haven't been very involved since then. Um, I'm kind of afraid of conflicts of interest and, and all kinds of stuff. But um, but the uh, from the, the sounds of it, the way I understand it, the Wikimedia Foundation doesn't dictate what a chapter does obviously they can just say no we don't recognize you as a chapter you need mm, to address mm. these and these and these issues as well but the wikimedia chapter gets to say listen we really want to represent our local languages and the, this wikimedia chapter just did just that they out of their own this isn't wikimedia or wikipedia it's saying same. thou shalt sure. make northern sutu wikipedia better this is us saying well, we okay, want to sat make down it and said well what from our country can we improve in, in yeah. wikipedia and yeah. you guys side on that which is very cool yeah and and obviously wikipedia is only as is only as good as its contributors um mm. for most of us are familiar with wikipedia it's it's a crowdsourced encyclopedia yeah. Yeah. and basically without people without mm. article mm. writers article editors um and and people who vet information in those articles they are they, they are weak yes, yes and so we really need people native language speakers in south africa we're talking people who speak twana uh, northern sutu uh, Corsa is doing quite well zulu uh you know whatever pedi um any native language in south africa that's inadequately represented in wikipedia they really need volunteers so um cool so if you know the language is driving try and get involved drive, and yeah. speak to our local wikimedia chapter now yeah yeah all right cool uh we're gonna go from that into the next one which is uh a concept <laughs> pen. It's purely conceptual. There's Dude, nothing real in it. Concept. Well, <laughs> so, someone has conceived it. 
Someone doodled it. It's 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 a Photoshop image. Yeah. Someone uh, doodled I it. I like it. Someone doodled it and handed it to a graphic designer and said, "Turn my doodle into Web 2.0." Well, that that to me is, is what a, what a concept is. Um, look, the idea of the pen's pretty cool. Is that basically you're going to have a a camera or something at the front of it, and you'll you'll hold this up to whatever color you want. So you can hold it up to a leaf or an apple or something, and it will then replicate that color. Yes, and then it's a pen. So you can actually write. So then you write with that color. Yes, um, and, and it will then mix the colors. So those uh, students have a problem with how they decided to mix the colors, um, but we won't get into that. If we if we conceptualizing here, I want a little LCD on the side that say, that gives me the HTML code for the. Uh, now you see no, that yeah, is that useful. Now yes, this is where cool. I was coming to, <laughs> Barry. That is now useful. Just think, it would be able to. Exactly. It's an actual literal color picker for GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you're using. Mm. That is useful. Mm. This crap of I drawing things. Exists. I don't know. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Speak to your buddies in China. Eh? I'm, no, I'm sure you could do it. It's called a camera. And then find out what color values they were. Yeah, but Tim, yeah, just think you, you're working you're right. in Photoshop, dude. You could dude. do that yeah. with an iPhone app. Literally, oh. no, but just think you're working in Photoshop and you just, you got the, on your end of your style, you know that most of the guys work yeah, with, those with those tablets and crap, so you they just hold it, it against something and it's, it just changes the color and they start working. That would be very cool. Huh? Very, very cool. There's an idea. If anybody goes and makes that app, I'm going to be bummed because I'm going to start writing that. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many ideas. <laughs> All right. The, I'm no. charge a thousand dollars for it. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, then it's the next one, which was quite was a geothermal house for your dog. You're such a cute puppy. Mm. Why? I'm sure I see him showing for the uh. preload this, but basically it's it's. Uh, let's pull this image up. It's not geothermal, dude. This well, is another thing. I hate these <laughs> stupid titles on these articles. Cloud. But it sounds <laughs> okay. Clouds. Oh, phew, clouds. No. Okay. Okay. Now I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Well, isn't that? It's basically it's we're using the earth to cool or heat. The doghouse. Yeah, but I mean, dude, it's burying a freaking doghouse in the ground. <laughs> yeah, but they, dogs they, have been doing this for millions and millions of years <laughs> when there were still wolves. G generally, though, when they talk about ge uh, geothermal uh, cooling for houses and the I piping. I mean, pedantic, okay? Yes, um, yes. <laughs> I but think no, it's pretty cool. It's a cool idea. Sun, yes. my, my problem with this is how do you warm. stop flooding? How do you stop flooding and how do you clean the damn thing? Yes. Because it's buried. Well, there's, a little what, what, there's a little, there's like a little porthole that comes you, out. You sort of actually wanted to, to be able to actually be wider and then like pop open and then you can open. Exactly, yeah. At least have some sort of lid that you can open or take the whole top off and then clean it inside. But mm. yeah, I could think that that's a problem. Yeah. yeah, but it's interesting and it's. I'm sure the dogs would love it. Until it rains. I don't know. Our dogs like sleeping inside, so I don't think they'd like a thing buried in the ground actually. <laughs> if you've conditioned your dogs to sleep inside then that's on you that's yeah it's you're never going to change that <laughs> no two labradors in the uh, house in the house not in my house <laughs> they sleep in the kitchen they're not allowed in the rest of the house ah, okay fair enough cool and the next one oh, okay the oh, is that it yeah oh, okay sorry <laughs> i thought we had something more to say about it not really <laughs> it, it looks interesting it's green uh, but i see problems with it my yeah. problem is not the fact that the core geothermal it's <laughs> How do you and deal with nature? Yeah. Because <laughs> you just need one heavy rainstorm and it's the your dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> the, the dog will get out. <laughs> and then <laughs> Staffy. Staffies don't, don't swim. They swim very well. Exactly. I don't, they don't, get to the I, I don't think the dogs will be any danger. It's just more mm. that, that that house won't be usable until you somehow get the water mm. out again. And I guess, you know, uh, uh, snakes and I guess if the dog's living in there permanently, yeah. it wouldn't be a problem. But if it's a more of a more of a you know when, on when a sunday afternoon gone. it goes and sleeps in there type thing it's probably going to attract wildlife mm, as mm. well so it's going to be well look if you're in a, a like a nice suburban garden i'm sure you're safe and i like the way it's like supposedly green okay it's all this green tech yeah. and everything you're burying plastic in the ground i don't know but, <laughs> but that's one thing about, about green technology that always grates me is <laughs> Is it, nobody ever explains how much like you carbon say. goes into making the plastic? Yes, and yeah. shipping it from China to your back garden in an oil ship. Well, what's it called? Well, look, I, I, th I think the concept is if you're really getting your dog a plastic dog house, get him this. Get him this one. Yeah. Um, mm. Whether this is actually much greener, because would you be heating the plastic dog house? Who heats their dogs? 
Yeah, who does? Yeah, exactly. What? <laughs> Don't have fur. <laughs> and especially in South Africa. I mean, I, I guess in the States when it's like minus 30. This also but do, I mean, the ground freezes. And I, I don't know how this much This also do cooling. Yes, I know. Yes, you weren't you listening? This cools okay, too. Okay, it tr- cools too. It cools too. Because it's geothermal. <laughs> Come yeah, on. It's, it's just cool. What, 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 I might, what I might consider using this for um, if, I were, if I were to have like a major menagerie of dogs is as a, a place for, for mother dogs to have puppies. Yes, fair uh, enough. To, to have the temperature moder- uh, modulated, moderated, yeah. regulated, controlled. Yes. Damage. I think you should get a big one for your kids. Wait, Stu. Come you on. Mean, you mean a house. <laughs> Dude, I mean, come on. You all used to build forts and crap. Yeah, well, huh? Our forts were huh? in trees. It's cool. Yeah, we used to, we used to dig a lot of stuff. Uh, we didn't have trees. <laughs> If uh, if I you remember correctly, you just want to buy it and put it in a put it in a tree and say, "There we go, kids. There's your tree house." <laughs> no, <laughs> <It's> air conditioned. <laughs> it's only air conditioned if it's buried. Is the problem because it actually uses the ground oh, as the yeah, heat to keep sink. It, yeah, to oh, keep yeah. it cool. If I remember correctly, the the uh, Norse used to do something similar to this um, up in the the frozen wastes of the north. Mm-hmm. They would also sort of semi sink their houses, almost like a pull box. You know, like mm-hmm. a little bit and the roof would stick out. Well, that's why in America you see, you see all these cellars. Uh, and part of the reason for that is they used to store their uh, vegetables in the cellars. Because it was quite cool. It was a constant temperature in hot and cold weather. Mm. Um, if you look at a lot of the um, new modern design TV shows, they actually talk about where you actually run piping deep. Uh, you, before you build your house, you basically take all the soil up, run piping down and put the yeah. soil back in. And then you, you pump uh, water through that and then through your walls. Um, and it keeps your house at a very, very constant temperature. So you, you don't need heating or cooling. You can, you can yeah. actually link that into your uh, heating, into yeah. your air, central air conditioning systems. Mm. And you can use it as a heat sink and actually save a lot of, a lot of energy with that. So it's very can, cool. You can use it as a heat pump, yeah. basically. But you don't want to yeah. retrofit your houses to use it, though. Yeah, it's no, too it's, expensive. Um, but yeah, you have to dig up house, everything. You, there's some very interesting things with, this, with new technology for mm. doing things like that when you're building a house. From and scratch, they, you yeah. can do some cool stuff. And there. they do say if you're building a brand new house, it will, and and you are planning on putting aircon, it will save you a lot yeah. of money. Cool. All right, into uh, air, from aircon Moving. into something more aircony. <laughs> and sorry, Barry's head in the background there. I, okay, I'm trying sorry, to find before, this. Before we carry on here, before we get to the the next story. Yeah. No, no, dude, carry on with the next story. I'll talk to, to talk about it after. We we miss the birds, the flapping birds. Oh, I lost a boy. Yes, so that was okay. cool. I was That's, watching that video. That is pretty cool. awesome, hey? That seagull. Mm. Um, it's yeah, quite freaky. The speed at which it flaps, which I was Stu, quite impressed. You with find that, that and then um, let me find it quickly for you cool. guys. But basically, yeah, it's, um, quite, it's quite slow for the. It's for an orno- lift. It's an so ornithopter. Sorry, um, ornithopter. It's beautiful. Topic here. I want one. Yeah, I know. Ornithopters are cool. It's very, very. I cool. love the ornithopters thanks to Dune. No, you Dude. want to see this thing. It is beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it's a robo- robotic ornithopter, so it's totally autonomous. Um, it looks like a bird, flies like a bird. And it, yeah, mm. yeah, but it's wow. it's not. It's but no, no, it, they've looking. had ornithopters for a while. I mean, we talked about it on the show and stuff. But this is just mm. really, really well done, and it's also um, they've had a lot of where they basically twisting the wings and and to actually control flight. Mm. And when if you look at the camera, I mean, its tail and head moves. For, for direction control oh, wow. and um it's also reasonably efficient as well they don't they, they, once again the article's a bit light on details but um I hate that. They, they're they 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 it, it it's supposedly quite efficient yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. i wonder what the flight time on it is i've got the no house stuff works link for it i know you put it in the wave so i don't know how i uh, know it's it. in the wave i'm going to paste it right this second. there we go cool let's turn my volume down right. show you. anyway so, let's talk about, about qatar um, they're planning on building a hovering hovercraft, basically to provide shade uh, on their pitches. So instead of like, you know, in England to, to uh, stop the rain where they've got basically on their, their huge pitches where you can close and then open again for some sunlight, they're going to have like a little hovercraft blocking out the sun. Okay, and but Stu, well, you were saying is... It's not quite a hovercraft, dude. It's a blimp. Okay, blimp. It's a big pillow blimp thing. Okay, I've got a question. Build the roof? Yes, I'm, I'm also wondering. Build the roof. I don't but know. You maybe, the, the advantage though is you've got lots of different stadia. And you maybe only need to build one of these. Instead of building roofs on all your stadiums. No, fair enough. Fair enough. But 
If they're close enough together. But if you look at the if you look at the concept photos, it doesn't even cover the whole stadium. It like covers like a fifty by fifty meter square in the middle. Yeah, it's quite so. Which is weird. It's so. It's not supposed to. It just moves around and cools areas, maybe. Then what's the point? This is the problem with it. I don't think it's. It's a a gimmick. A terribly well thought out concept. Come on, we want swarms of these things. But it's interesting. No, it's with lasers. They they said that the the cost. That the the big thing is okay. I mean, you're gonna be spending, you know, tens or hundreds of millions of whatever to build a roof on a stadium. Yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. very, very expensive. It's, very expensive, it's a yeah. very ex- expansive structure and all the rest. And especially if you need to maybe retrofit it onto existing stadiums. And you also need to make it so can open and close. And yeah, all no, the rest of it. this they were talking about is, I think, $1.5 million. Oh, so it's not too per, much. Per, per device. magic flying carpet but thing, looking thing. Is this thing inflated with helium inflated or something? With helium, oh, yeah. Okay, so if the fans that I saw this stops, it doesn't No, 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 come no, crashing no. It down. doesn't crash into anything. It just kind of will drift away with the breeze. <sighs> it becomes like a, a real cloud. cloud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's... I just build a Monte Cassino style roof. <clears throat> it's a bit of cheesy. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, like Monte Cassino has that whole... Yes, the, fl- the, the clouds and, and yeah. the whole Italian thing going in. The problem though is you want real sunlight for the grass. Yeah, and for other things. So, <laughs> and make an openable roof. The, the problem is, is, it's supposed to keep the crowd cool, but it doesn't seem to cover the crowd. Is it for the crowd or for the players? I assume it was for the players. I don't know. The thing is, having shade on the field kind of messes with your... Yeah, the depth, because especially if it's got... You're going from shadow to, to, to bright sunlight, and it, you and know, nice quite regularly. <coughs> uh, it's fine if you've got maybe one shadow Come covering on. the field. That's why they're doing it. They want to make the games yeah. more interesting <laughs> and be able to, to like affect the games in the direction they want know. them to do i don't know it's it's an interesting idea but they, you know they think think of all those poor soccer players that can now have it so blaming the ball this year they, they you know all that year yeah, they're gonna be able blame to blame the, the fake clouds <laughs> flying clouds yeah, because i can bet you they're gonna go oh but why is the cloud over this side of the field now and this and that no did you, you know what i'm gonna make a call on it gimmick you'll never see it yeah or you'll see one that no. they'll prototype and say it didn't work you'll never see it yeah You'll yeah. never see it. Sorry. <laughs> Geeks right. everywhere will want one. Okay. Going into something. Just you play in winter. You will. S- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you worry about the play in winter. <laughs> oh, it, it does get, it does get a bit oh, no. in winter. There, <laughs> but still. Okay. Going into yeah. something that flies and you do want and yes. is real. And but we've covered goes. these guys a lot. so. Um. You can see. So it's on the screen now. The guys can actually watch this thing flying. It actually looks like a bird. Oh, yeah, is that what we're talking about? The bird? Yeah, one? the bird. Okay, cool. Yes, the bird. The robot bird. Um, you can see that head moving. It's like it's, it's so cool, hey? It's um, really, really, really well done. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's... Where can we buy one? That's you, the question. I think you can make one, but you can't buy one. Yeah. For the right price, you can no, buy I'm anything. Sure you could, um, uh, this will oh, become yes. A, this, no, no, oh, no, no, no. I'm telling yeah. you, this will become, this is gonna become a product. Yeah. Even if it's just a fall on... For spying. Uh, yeah, I guess, eh? I mean, those poor birds over any war zone or anything is just going to get well, shot. What seems crap quite nice sky. is I don't mm. know what it's going to be like when, when, you, when you've got heavy wind, but it seems to be able to fly quite slowly. Yes, it does. And it also seems to be, you know, it can glide and all the rest, yeah. of it, but it seems to have quite fine grain control over, over its flapping and, and, and all the rest. And it's and incredible yeah. how, much, how much lift and stuff they, they generate. You know, the fact that they, they keep this bird yeah, in the that's air... that's what I was saying. Um, you know, and and the wings—they're not organic wings. They they don't curve. Mm. You can see they've got. Um, I mean, they they are flexible, but but they actuate. You know, like like, like you would expect wings. a robotic wing to actuate. Yeah. So you know, there's a definite seam where yeah, it flaps, where it and they do falls, say it's yeah. one single motor driving the wings. It's yeah. Incredible. With a I, I don't know with some torsion. They torsion, say with torsion, torsion drives and and to to twist the wings on to to twist each wing. To uh, bank and turn and etc. That's cool. But if no, the wing moves, cool. it generates lift. So the, f- the the in theory the bird can stand still and the wings can flap no. and it should be able uh, to generate. No, those lift. wings don't. Um, those Very wings few ge- birds can hover. Those wings generate thrust. No, but yeah. it, uh, there no, is some. It generates thrust by flapping and mm-hmm. then it flies through the air and then you get a normal aerofoil okay. effect taking. You know, normal wing effects taking over. You reckon yeah, it's yeah. only with forward movement? It only can fly forward, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Most most birds, th- there are very few birds that can hover. Yeah. I think hummingbird. Well, we had that uh, uh, hummingbird uh, demo uh, one where they also built a yes. hummingbird one a couple of weeks ago. That's the, the wings have to flap faster than you can see. I mean, yeah. Yeah. 
But no, I think many birds can hover, but not for extended periods of time because it takes a lot they of they energy to... They can only hover if there's in enough thermals. Uh, thermal. Mm. And I think I the will, slight I breeze. Don't know because oh. I, I'm not going there. I'm not going to mention. Anything. But also, you can hover when you go, if you've got a slight headwind. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. then you've got airflow actually effect. Got yeah. Air flowing over your wings. But anyway, yeah. very cool. Check the video. And they can also in one position. Um, what's it in the two D thing? Is they don't mind falling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You can oh, hover yeah. with your feet and go. Birds. Let's <laughs> talk ornithology. Yeah. All right. Well, just more stuff, more if stuff anyone flying. actually knows anything about birds, we probably pissed them off because I think we're talking. Cut. We <laughs> don't know what we're talking about. on this <laughs> as well. All right. In, into the next <laughs> next flying thing, which we, as Stu says, we have covered quite often. Mm. Um, these are so the the quadrocopters, but they've now got it so that it can bounce a ball, juggle, and between two and, and two of them when they more like oh a game of badminton, really. It's yeah, but it does juggle as well. Uh, it well, um, it bounces, oh, yeah. bounces it, but it's. Come on. Look, this cool. is hard. These are, are getting hardcore with their, with their quadcopters. It's oh. very cool. But once again, I want one. We, but we you need can to build get those. I know. But I want so to build you one. You can go buy one. You can go get them. When can I, I have a look at the... the yeah, you I, can go Dragonfly sells them. Yeah, I know. Buy. But I want um, to build one and then that means I need free time. And well, when well, I have true, free time, true, I'll definitely. do it. But what about getting... Okay, here's another idea. Get that um, one that... What's it called? The one that works with the iPhone and other But then devices. you need an iPhone. No, you don't. Now, there's already... They've open-sourced the APIs and stuff, so you can actually run it on any device. Oh, cool. So you don't oh, have to build cool. the device, but you have to write your own software. Cool. No, no, no. No, <laughs> guys have already written for the, for the for Android. Android. For Android. Okay. And there's a whole SDK and stuff to I run it off. I didn't see that. Because I, we got I, a Parrot I, AR drone. Oh, it's a review. Parrot AR drone. Thing. Yeah, yeah. I've spent my toy budget. This year already? Well, no, for this couple of months. And I've books. Poshim also might be asking Barry... To buy something for me. Okay. But which, Barry, he, which Barry he's bought himself. Parrot AR drones, uh, Barry, dude. talking about that, do you want to show the guys the, um, the MacBook Air? Yeah, let me just... Uh, show them how... how. Um, I'll... Okay. Yeah, let me grab a quick. We'll, we'll come back to you. Back. We'll come back to you. Um, all right. Talking about uh, Androids and all the rest we might be getting finally the, our own Android market. Yes. Yay. <laughs> Second quarter. Yeah, um, this I year or next year? <laughs> yeah, no, th no, this year apparently. From and second quarter is April, May, June. Cool. Wait, 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 Barry, uh. you're on <laughs> screen. That is so certain. What is battery life they like? Are, uh, seven hours, con <laughs> like using hours, proper using hours, Wi-Fi, internet. It's hectic. Eh? It's uh, it's well impressive, and it is light as hell, and. The instant on, which uh, is a byproduct, obviously, of the SSD memory, is very impressive. You literally open that thing, and it's boom on. Like my, I, I know my, my my MacBook Pro is pretty quick at instant on, but it's nowhere near as quick as that. And the boot time is crazy, absolutely crazy. From cold boot, you press you press the on button. That thing is booted in about four seconds. It's it's insane. Mm. <laughs> I can definitely attest to, to SSDs speeding up. I've also got an ultra portable. Um, mm. came, with a, came with an SSD. Um, and uh, not, obviously not a MacBook Air. This is a Lenovo, a ThinkPad rather. Um, mm. And it boots lightning quick. Uh, whether you're booting Windows or you're booting uh, Ubuntu, it boots lightning quick off SSD. Yeah, I've, as I'm, I re replaced the hard drive in mine, in my MacBook Pro. I've got one of those hybrid hard drives. Oh, yeah. And also... It, you notice it on boot time it makes things a <coughs> lot faster yeah yeah um, especially if you like when i was installing it you reboot a whole bunch of times to get everything sorted and that and it learns what f what sectors have been read regularly and it loads yeah. that into ssd mm. uh, into the into I, the flash i wonder if um if apple's done something special or if they're running it through the uh, the same sata controller uh, because, I mean, those chips are soldered directly on the board. It's actually not a drive in there. It's just the chips are directly onto the board. So I wonder if they interface Big RAM drive, dude. Different deal. Big RAM drive, maybe. It's mapped into yeah. mapped into memory. Could be. I doubt it, though, but... Yeah. Um, who knows? I want to know what they would it's have done. Fast. Yeah. It's ridiculously fast. Yeah, but I mean, even if SATA can get you three gig a second. Six now. Yeah. 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 
So that's pretty quick, eh? I, I, I'll, I'll actually go read up on it because I did, it actually would be quite interesting to know if they're still, you know, piping it through a SATA. I'm, uh, I'm pretty controller. sure they're piping it through SATA. Sure they have to have some sort or, of or the SSD. Look, that drive won't be quick enough to reach the SATA max throughput. Um, Six gig a second? Yeah. You, you won't. No, flash memory is not that fast. So look at the speeds of these things. They, no, they, I they, um, I've Solid got, I've got one here, and it's one of the fastest ones I could get that we write our videos to while we're recording. And it is was faster than all the others, and that's about 400. Uh, and, and now you're talking at ten, factor 10 faster than Yes, that. yes. Um, they, they're just not, not there yet. Yeah. Um, just a quick question, because I can't remember the stats of, you know, or how SATA, SATA, uh, SATA 2, 3, and SATA 2, 6 work now. Um, the, is, isn't that the, the total speed across the whole controller? Yes. Yeah, but you've only so got one you've disc in yeah, so you've only got yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. and, and if you put a pro problem, put a second controller in. Um, yeah, okay. Mm. Obviously, in the MacBook Air, that's not an issue. Yeah. Um, but for most of us, uh, you know, who just want to run one motherboard with the onboard controller and, say, six hard drives. Look, put it this way. If you're getting six, uh, six gigabits per second, you, you won't care. It will be so far. <laughs> That's your limiting factor. You you won't even see it in your boot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tim, don't say stuff like that, dude. <laughs> Come back, say exact same thing to us in six years' time. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm talking about at the moment. Uh, no, no. At the moment, at the moment. Back no, um, who, who needs six gig transfer time? No, no. Right uh, now. Tim just right called Barry. <laughs> oh no, he's Barry's back. Cool. <laughs> ah. yeah. All right. Into something now. It's slightly a bit uh, more depressing. It's something <laughs> that Microsoft's trying to push. Sorry, did we finish this? Sorry, before we... Oh, no, you, you wanted to chime in on this Android market story. What is oh, happening yes. with this Android market story? Sorry, I, we There's are a jumping around. rumor it show. may be out no, second quarter. Yeah, so, so wh wh what happened here, just to give everybody an idea, um, uh, what, what I've seen mm. on the My Broadband forums is one of our members immediately spotted that the tweet I linked to was, was removed, the, the, the yeah. tweet from Leaf international themselves so it looks like this wasn't supposed to be an official communication but the tweet was still last i checked on the pr and comms manager head of pr and comms at leaf international leaf distributes hcc products in in south africa and it was in his twitter feed mm. um, and i couldn't really get details um at the time of writing on uh, but it, it looks like they were talking to one of the guys at google africa looking at the hcc yeah. twitter stream um, they they had a big meeting with a guy from Google Africa that morning. Okay, so cool. They were chatting to Google. It looks I, I, like I know they've been working on it. Down. They've yes. been yeah. telling us that they're working on it. They keep on promising it. So because um, the when was it? Last week? No, this yeah, last week, end of last week. There were some apps available on the Android Store with South African rand prices on them. Yeah, oh, well, here we go. Thinking Space thirty two forty four. Yeah. Oh. And when you there click you on... You, but you can't purchase it. Yeah, you click on buy, it, loading device. There is a way around and it if you want to do it. Device. If you've yeah. got a rooted uh, Android, there's a way you can buy oh, it. Oh, no, I've, yeah. on mine, you just choose the... You use the... Market enabler. The market enabler, yeah. and then you change the market. Uh, just for clarity's sake, when you're looking at the web store, the web store actually does show all apps. Um, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, I think you can maybe just set the locale. Um, but it will show you all apps. But, then but the it's interesting that it's converted to RANs too. Mm. I guess it's that's not. I think it's a it's a universal module. They just plug in. There. Yeah, I, I think that's Google it's being just, clever. It's just interesting. That's yeah. all. But Ooh, uh, it's going to be once again. I think it's going to be a case of uh, it's going to be like Xbox Live. We're going to wait another five years before we see it. No, I think we'll see it, but I think it's going to be limited because we've got we're not the whole game. The we're going to anyway. we, yeah, so with the same game problem. Just so irritating. well, do we though? Now, the interesting thing is, a friend of mine, no, well, a friend and colleague, followed up on this whole. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the article in my gaming, um, where mm. where we basically had the film and publications board tell us, you know, no, we uh, we have legal recourse against Steam, for instance, yeah, against digital distribution that mm -hmm. of games that don't come through us. And um, once again, we go to our, to our uh, uh, guys at, at Michelson's and they come back and say, actually, technically, the Film and Publications Board need to go reread the act. Um, because as long as those servers are in South Africa, if they, if they have an IECNS license, if they've got an ICASA effectively broadcasting license, which most ISPs in South Africa do, mm -hmm. they're exempt from the Film and Publications Board rating systems, apparently. Mm. Ah. So, we have Steam servers in South Africa. So, uh, we have Steam servers at MWeb, at Web Africa, at, I think on IS, 
Um, but there, there are lots of Steam servers up in South Africa now. Yeah. So if Google, and we do have GGCs. Um, if, I know there's Google caches. Yeah, yeah, so if we have just Android servers for these games, all of a sudden, all that legislation can be bypassed. Potentially, I haven't actually confirmed. Yeah, I mean, the question is, this will they do that? Because they're going to—I think they're going to follow the Apple model. They're just not going to let those things into. I, the I hope not, because the, the the difference between the Android and the Apple model thus far has been that we have access to free games. It's only the the, uh, the only differentiator at this point seems to be if something costs money, we don't see it. Oh, okay. But on yeah, on the South African no, iPhone no, store, there you are no get games. games. There's no games you unless they list them under the entertainment category. Yeah. Okay. Like you can't get so, Angry Birds on your iPhone or your iPad. Well, it costs money. Okay. Yeah. No, no, for yeah. the free version you can't. Oh wow. So who do we you can't to get talk it to to get this changed? Talk to your congressman. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's a good point, Barry. Because what I'm thinking, if I'm right, and and I'll con try to confirm this, if I'm right, then we should be able to go to our operators who stock iPhone, Vodacom and MTN. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't yeah. think Cell C does iPhone, and we tell them, is it possible to mirror? The app store in South Africa, boom, around the FPB, done. Would, would Apple allow that? They would would, are would they Apple not running exactly. local servers for the apps anyway? I would. I wouldn't let that stuff go international. I'd run it on my own network. Exactly. No, no. The question is not whether you do. I'm telling you, they must have a local Apple server sitting somewhere. There's no way that they want to pull that Look, stuff down every time. Well, I know they do local caching. I just don't know if they do a local server because every but I no. had something where really. the no. updates got cached incorrectly and, and they had a bad checksum. Yeah, I've checked it, that happen with Android four times. For the updates, well. yeah. 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 Yeah, but this was with Apple. Uh, you need to when, go to somebody at Vodacom and sing to them, Be My Hero Baby, <laughs> and just get, I can be and get, to get games. Because that's the only thing that's lacking so badly from the App Store. Just it's switch just, your App Store to Kenya, dude. Yeah. Store yeah. Games. Switch your App Store to Kenya. You don't need to change anything. You just go to the location, set it to Kenya. You get your, you use your South African credit card and but you get your games and everything. I mean, but even if you set your app store to, to America, you still use South African credit card. I just want no. local. Yes. It doesn't work anymore. We tried it. We tried it during the week. I did it over the weekend. Okay. Well, then it's maybe you're lucky your credit card works because we tried it on... We tried it on a standard bank credit card and it doesn't work. Oh, okay. It rejected well, it. This is for Apple? Uh -huh. No, for, for Apple. Oh, okay, sorry, not Apple. Sorry. No, 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 Android. for Apple Android. on to, 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 to convert your, um, you can't use your South African credit card on a US iTunes, yeah. a US iTunes Yeah, okay, account. no, that you can't. No, that you can't. Okay, no, yeah. no, no, no. So I thought you meant Android. No, 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 not Android, no. All right, okay, from that, we're going to go into the next thing Stu wishes to be angry about. Rawr! Rawr! I'm going to rage. Um, and this is basically okay. Microsoft. Do you want to give yeah. background? If Ford buys a washer, right, from a firm in China that uses Microsoft and that Microsoft established establishes as using unauthorized software, Microsoft can sue Ford. Well, this they is, want to be able to. This is the new law that they're trying to push through in the States. Very interesting. When I read this first, when, they, when you said washer... I was thinking like dishwasher. Oh, no, dude, a flipping I, a I washer so between confused. you put a washer you put on a bolt it between a bolt and that yeah. that washer. I realized that. So they want they want to get firms to police other firms' software that, licensing. Yeah. They want they this want is to. Th this is why I was this is why I was confused was because I thought they were actually purchasing something that ran Windows no. to control it. No, no, and I mean no. they're not even doing that. They're, they're buying something that was made with uh, a Windows. No, no, operating. it doesn't even need to be made. If if they sold it to you and somehow tracked that that piece, like an no, Excel spreadsheet, it's, it's literally no, dude. If literally in the factory, right, the boss. Yeah. that has never set foot on the factory floor has got a pirated copy of Word on his desktop. But it has to be, it has to be part of the sale, which it will be. Yes. No, it's, it's, no, 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 no. it's part of the company. No, no, what they, they said in this, it has to somehow be part of that piece. Okay, so it's, a, it's as which, you say, but, it's the PC that generates the or the printer's connected to. Or, or, or somehow they, they, I mean, they, they tracked how yeah. many units they made in a month. Dude, it's ridiculous yeah. and it's interesting. I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. But you see, it's already been passed in Louisiana. And, but the, the advantage is law, they so. can sue Ford quite easily. But the next step is suing the consumer. Yeah. They're trying to get the, the, the purchasing companies to do their dirty work. So now big companies like Ford must go find out from their manufacturers 
and make sure and police them and make sure all their uh, yes. machines are running authentic uh, versions of Windows. Bugger that. Well, no, and my Michael's, just not on. I was going to say, my good answer to this is instead of going, are you, are you running legitimate versions of Windows? You just go, are you running Linux? No, okay, we can't do business with. Or you're you. running? Are you running any Microsoft products? Yeah, I yes. don't want. I don't want a single Microsoft product anywhere in the chain because then I'm going to get sued. Sued. It's just. Exactly, they scream themselves. But the, the problem is, is, as a small, say, a small company, you want to buy something in China. You want to buy some plush toys. Yeah. Right now, all of a sudden, I mean, you go ask the manufacturers, like, are you using legal software? There we go. You want to buy Angry Birds? Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh the ones full facing down, down, dude. Must there have. There we go. Want? I doubt very much these were made with legal software. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just China's interesting. As a small company, right? So where do you draw yeah. the line? You ask this Chinese manufacturer, are you using legal software? They say yes. So do you now have to audit this company? You're yes. like a one-man yeah, show. Exactly. Are you not going to audit them? Do you take it as face value that they're saying, yes, the software so, is so valid? So step two, Microsoft then, Soft then comes out with, here's your insurance yeah. amount protection you pay. Money. Here's no, some they're, protection they're money. They're turning into total mobsters. No. And, it's, and it's not all f like facets of the company. It's it's you know it's ba it seems like the, like this legal department it's their task in life to make Microsoft look as bad as possible in the public yeah. public yeah. domain. I'm sure the PR department at Microsoft is freaking out at this. Yeah, are the, they? The, the are point they? is, if they were freaking out and they had the power to stop them, they would. But yeah. PR doesn't have the power to stop. But them it's ever. a massive no. company. That's the problem. Yeah. No, PR is obviously executive management. That's the bottom line. If the lawyers the are doing this, executive management is given yes. to say so. Yeah. I have a question though. What happens if you decide, okay, I'm going to find out if this software is legit and they say, no, it's not legit. And you say, I'm not going to do business. And then Microsoft sues you for not telling them that you found someone who's running illegal no. software. No, 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 no. That, that's not, that's not oh, part come of on. the, that's not part it's of gonna the, be, the It's going to be coming. I can tell you that. <laughs> but it's not interesting because, right. okay, so you've got your plush toys, right? They say, yes, everything's fine. We, we run legal copies. You ca you're great. You place your order for 20,000 units. Small order, right? All of a sudden, Microsoft comes on. Oh, are we seeing you? So now, even though that you've done due dil diligence, you've done your part, they're going to now wrap you up in lawsuits for the next, what, five years or something? This is before uh, this gets sorted out. Eventually, she comes to court and they say, actually, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. You know, you can carry on. Now you can go get your... 20,000 units yeah. of plush toys that have now been sitting in a factory for five years. Yeah, yeah. Th this and is not, ridiculous. This is an obviously Microsoft's uh, failed campaigns, international campaigns to get legislation pushed through to respect intellectual property in other nations, especially in China. I mean, it's a, it's a well-known fact that, that <coughs> in China, pirated XP yes. is rife. That's why Windows, uh, oh, sorry, why Internet Explorer 6 still sees a, ma yeah. a majority market share mm. there, if I'm not mistaken. Because so, XP is, is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so it's this, the way I just hope this doesn't come outside the US. No, just simple. It, if, if they're smart, Linux. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I look so good. We'll, we'll see. We'll it's see just interesting that, they, that, I don't know, if it's, a, it's just a, a company-wide business model. It's, cool. I don't know if it's not mm. going to... So instead of, instead of actually making innovative software and... Which and they that, can't. We're just going to sue everyone and make our money that way. They're getting yeah. out-innovated, out-used, out... -used, out everything so they're going to out sue yeah cool and, and i don't want to hop on this too long but these, these guys from grok law it's it's a website yes, yeah. of, uh, of yeah. guys who, who look at l uh, like crap legislation like this and, and comment on it and um and like for instance the android the where they sued barnes and noble for the nook and and which runs android that the, they say uh, their statement fully agrees with yours which is um you know like microsoft what's this now you know now they can't make a competing product so now they've got yeah. to try and, 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 sue and like, sue their competitors yeah and, and oppress um the competition mm. in cool. war anyway yeah. we'll get into our, our next thing which should be happy uh quentin do you want to give a background this is the retro handheld gaming collection since it was from your tweet yeah honestly i've just been playing on it i don't know too much about the background but basically what this guy did is he took the old retro games which i grew up with and he's put them on the site and you can play them. Uh, it's Donkey, like Kong. Donkey Kong yes. and stuff like that. Way before Nintendo DS's and yeah. Well, wasn't the original Donkey Kong a dual screen game anyway? I remember no, I no, remember one no, I remember oh, being okay. one screen as as the thing rolled yeah. forward and you used to get those little devices. Yes. But yeah. I remember a dual screen Donkey Kong yeah, oh, so that it was, was wasn't the it King bomb. Kong? No, no, I'm sure it was Donkey it's Kong. Yeah, they've got the one Kong. screen one. Yeah, but that was the upgrade. That was the newer version. Yes, yeah, yeah, it was Donkey Kong Jr. Yes. I remember Donkey Kong Jr. That was yeah. so awesome. 
Yeah, that's that's very cool. cool. Uh, where can they get to it? Um, it's called pickupick.com with C's and a hyphen in there. Cool. What's yeah. that? So is, 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 do you think that's a, that's a throwback to Pikachu, to Pokemon? I pick don't pick. Anyway. I just want to know. Is, I, 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 they don't tell you. I had a look. Um, is he running the actual ROMs or has he just re-implemented the games? Probably re-implemented them. That's quite a lot of work to re-implement the games. That is. That's what I'm saying. That's quite yeah, cool. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Because he's they, got they, a lot of games. He must be just not going to tell you and we, we will assume. No, no, I mean, but... The thing is, they're not ROMs, hey? These are old LCD-based games. Yes, no, but there will be a... There will be a ROM of, somewhere. There will be a bit of ROM somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And you can maybe... You just write a like converter. That, that's how they do with... That's how MAME works with the old um, Golden China games and the old... Uh, oh, what's <laughs> it, the... Nintendo, the old Nintendo games. Yeah, yeah. Famicom. Yeah. 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 They dump those ROMs from the cartridges. Yeah, and that's different. That, that's an actual... That, that's software running on a... So MAME is an emulation layer. Yes. These things don't have unified hardware to emulate. Um, no, so no, you find a lot of them, though, did actually run it on. Might have been some similarities yeah. okay. between. I, I just don't know. I, but that's what I'm saying. It's quite well, How fun. complicated it's, could they have been? But that's <laughs> the thing. Okay, fine. So he's, got, he's re-implementing <laughs> them. Hmm. So he has to have these things working. No, it's hard. He has to get them working first before you can see how the well, game I'm works. Sure I've got one somewhere in my basement that the battery just died on. Yeah. Well, garage. All right, it's cool. Basement. It's good fun to play. I played a bit of Donkey Kong today. Yeah. From that to, to to something else, I think we want to give a mention out, which is Vi Hot on YouTube. Yeah. Um, she makes some just really cool, basically maths based videos. It basically, you watch them and you want to go learn more about maths. Um, I think one of the uh, me and um, Jan, we're busy talking about the pi, why pi is wrong. She'd rather use tau, which is two pi, and making two pies, because this is all to do with pi day a couple of days ago. Um, and just, she is brilliant. The, those videos are just awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Uh, and, and, and one of her missions in life, because she says um, she was incredibly bored in math class, and so her mission in life is to make math not <coughs> boring. So, uh, from any topic in math that you ever found boring, go go and check her videos out. They they truly are. Oh, ex interesting. Yeah, exactly. So you come out of there and go. I want to read about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, graph theory, for instance, we, we we touched on it in varsity level. We didn't mm. actually. Uh, we deal never with touched it, much it. At, at, at school level. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And and you had to have taken a specific subject in order to do graph theory, mm. if I'm not mistaken. And um, and it was always a very abstract thing, you know. And she turns it into something fun, which is yes. actually quite cool. And you can see can be a kid sort with of applications. Again. And it says, "Well, this okay." And it says, "Well, if you want to know why it does this, go read up." Um, so it's it's very cool. Following on our YouTube videos that get you interested in maths and science and all the rest of it. Yes, yes. Uh, it's V I H A R T. Yeah, Vi Heart. Vi Heart. Oh. Cool. Uh, and then to the next one, which is a app for librarians. Augmented reality. Uh, it, 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 <laughs> has it become it. for a decent use for augmented reality? Really? Yeah, no. It's um, cool. This is the first one I've actually seen. And basically, it allows the, them, they'll scan at a, a, a bunch of books, and I'll say, okay, this one's in the wrong place. So instead of them having to go and check every single individual book, it says wrong place and all these are right. <laughs> and it doubles as a stock check. Yes. Oh, very cool. I want them for my library, so I can just, instead of reading all those books in, I just want to go, Snapshot, and then it must just do it. Uh, in fairness, they do use some sort of fiducial. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I'm talking future versions. <laughs> yeah, because you need, I want. you need a good this resolution will, for that. You just t take your photo of your whole uh, bookshelf, and it must just read all your entire library in. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> well, you can do it with a high-res camera. And, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I looked at the video. It looks like they use the Galaxy Tab. Uh, oh, so yeah. it, it looked like it. It, it looked like a, a, a large-ish okay, uh, cool. smart device. Yeah. So. Oh, it's definitely Android. I mean, that's what they they Yeah, they said it's Android. Android. I'm also interested to find out if they used some sort of um, some sort of AR API or if they did their own thing, like if they used the Unity AR API. There was also those guys that open source, so you <coughs> could do the stuff with the API, and then there's competitions around. I just can't remember who they are right Qualcomm. now. Qualcomm. Qualcomm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, is there an iPad? Is there an iPad app for it? No. Lol. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 Barry. I'm wait, wait. Jags again. You're on screen now. <laughs> Go for it. Yes, we know it's pretty. <laughs> Yes, I bought one. I yeah. Did. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, apparently, yeah. apparently, uh, apparently, <laughs> um, apparently, they uh, are really expensive in Hong Kong, compared to the states. They're not. They're not cheap. But you remember, they haven't been uh, released, released yet in officially. Hong so we yeah. actually they're not released anywhere with officially. The EU version of them. Um, they're only uh, due to release in Hong Kong in April sometime. 
and that's because of the delay for the whole Japan, uh, the whole, uh, the whole, you know, uh, earthquake. Earthquake, yeah, earthquake they, cool. de they delayed it in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Japan uh, until sometime in April. So that's why they're expensive. So they, they've been imported from uh, the UK, where there's none to be had. And they're like gold here. No, like hardly anybody's got them. So to get hold of them, they, I know one, one, one uh, little side market that has everything. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Cool. I was gonna ask you, you know ask, where did you get it? <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't have them in all the high Apple, street Apple, stores, uh, reseller stores. Uh, they've got it in like a market. It's like a big computer market. It's about uh, four or five stories high, and it is just jam, jam, jam packed with uh, com everything, anything okay. your geek heart desires. It is. It's it's like Hamleys for geeks. Yeah, you and just outside you can buy the Angry Birds. Uh, Flash toys. Flappy toys. <laughs> cool, cool. All right, okay, into our last topic. So tonight, Stu, do you want to go talk this uh, oh, first yeah. image back from the Mercury probe? Mercury probe, so it's the <laughs> uh, messenger mission. Uh, it's just gone into orbit around Mercury. <coughs> so it was the last. It looks like the moon. It does, it's pretty barren and shot up. I thought it would be. Um, but it's the, f it's the last planet that we haven't had a orbiter around and things like uh, except. No, it is the last planet. I think Neptune. Mm, maybe not Neptune, but anyway, it's one of the last planets that we haven't had a, an orbiter around, and now we do. Okay, cool. And it's just gone into orbit around it, and we'll be studying it for the next couple of years. Oh, very yeah. cool. Is it staying in orbit? Yep, yeah. staying in orbit. That is the, the point. <laughs> there, there was the uh, Surveyor <laughs> or something, Mariner, Mariner, Mariner's 9 or something missions, and yeah. it flew past. Uh, okay. And then, so it, it, up till... Recently, we only had um, half a half a hemisphere, oh, and okay. then then oh, mes right. messenger f flew past, took a photo of the other hemisphere, and then came back and has now gone into orbit around it. As okay. far as I remember, so doesn't Mercury um, get? You, how, how long does it take to uh, get those pictures back to Earth? Uh it's not that far. It's uh, probably a couple of light minutes. Yeah, uh, okay. probably talking about. Uh, depends. Well, well, what depends. Sort of speed will it pump those images down at? Do you know? It's, mean, pretty, like, low what, speed, eh? it's pretty low speed. Sorry? It's pretty yeah, low it's speed. Low. Um, yeah, it's pretty low speed. It's it's the it will come over the deep space network. It's quite slow. Um, you're probably talking like nine six or something, or maybe a little bit higher. Uh, board. Yeah, yeah. Board, yeah, yeah. board. It takes a while, quite a while to. Oh no, no! It'll take quite a while. Crazy. Take quite a while. And I think they also have problems because of the sun. Because that's you, you have ask. to. That's why you've, we've never been able to slave a telescope, or like a big telescope, against it, like the Hubble. We've never been able to mm. take photos of Mercury with the Hubble because it's too close to the sun and it never gets far enough away that if something goes wrong, Hubble's going to get <laughs> severely damaged. Uh, things yeah. like that. So, what about the orbiter around Mercury now? Doesn't Mercury occasionally get licked by. No, no, it's pretty far. By the sun? No, oh, okay. But it will be radiation hardened, of course. Um, the, the solar flares don't get that far. Okay, no, cool. you're still quite far. Um, but yeah, that would be pretty impressive because if it was if they were getting that far, pretty much melt the planet. I'm not sure. Don't ask me, dude. You're asking the wrong person. Okay. I'm not in Mass Effect. Out of myself. In Mass Effect, there are plenty of planets that get licked by their stars. Yeah, <laughs> because we, it tastes nice. Sure. But <laughs> yes, if it did get licked by the star, it will probably cause havoc with the. <laughs> with, I was, was going to say, with the probe orbiting it. Needless to say, you don't get to land on those planets. Yeah, no, yeah, there's there's sad. not much there. Put it that way. <laughs> but it's inter uh, There's some interesting geography and some interesting. Uh, it just explains a lot more of how the solar system formed and things like that. Because you have a clearer picture of the rocky planets and, and stuff like that. So, right. knowledge cool. is always good. All right. Uh, that's the end of our show. Oh. Cool. Um, let's go through. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Pleasure. Thank you, Quinton. Been awesome. Thank you, Jan. All right. It's a pleasure. And from all of us. And Barry. And Barry. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Sorry, <laughs> you, you, do, you do realize what time it is here. It's half past two in the morning here. Ah, oh, that <laughs> explains the aggravation. Yeah, I know, no, no, thanks, Barry. Sorry, sorry yeah, but about you, that. You've I'm only, just, been, you've been, only long been there for a couple of days now, so the jet lag hasn't <laughs> worn off. <laughs> it still feels like seven o'clock <laughs> in the evening. Well, that is dedication. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, guys. From all of us, uh, cheers and thank you for, for the show, for listening. Awesome. Cheers, Goodbye. cheers. Goodbye. Bye, everyone.